Painting is more or less over, even though our November was fairly warm by the usual standards of South East England. I've not completed the whole priming or the final coat up top, but life does go on. I did quickly do the orange finishing strip above the fender though. It neatened off the edge where the two pack polyurethane paint stopped and I couldn't get the roller furler down. But that's not what today's episode is about. It's about me getting it wrong and having a go fixing something. And I'm not talking about mucking up the camera lens focus point on this clip. Hello. Well, we're back under Alan and sometimes you just get it wrong. Uh, the idea that I had for putting these, uh, these reinforced glass fiber domes over these vulnerable old uh, fixings into the bottom of the hull. It used to be where there was drainage for when the boat was going to be stuck on the side of either a ship or a, or a rig. The truth is that I don't like the domes that much. I think they might actually take away one vulnerability and add another. And they're also not that much less work than what I'm now going to do. So I'm actually going to remove the, uh, this entire metal fixing and then I'm going to glass over it. To speed things up, as I needed to remove a fair chunk of hard stainless steel, I thought I'd exchange my now well-worn flap wheel, not something that's been lacking in usage over past episodes, with a heavy-duty thick grinding disc. That must do the trick, surely. Or at least it should have. I needed to grind with ket, with all the keel cooling fittings and fiberglass around. At the angle I was forced to work at, it was tricky to control, and so progress was slow and unsatisfying. I quickly did a U-turn and fitted a brand new flap wheel to the grinder, and forged onwards at reducing the steel back to near flush with the hull and without any lumps or steps in the material. This was dramatically more successful and the fresh disc cut through the steel at a rate of knots. I even managed to find a comfortable object on which to rest my head as I worked away. I cut back the metal methodically around the fitting a few times, not concentrating on any one area for too long. This was because the friction was heating up the metal to quite some extent and whilst the old sealant had pretty quickly incinerated, hardened and fallen away, I wanted to limit the heat build-up that might begin to damage the fibreglass and resin laminate surrounding the steel. A few moments rest each time the steel became too hot to touch with bare fingers was my tactic. Eventually the surface was approaching smooth ridge freeness, and it graduated nicely from the surrounding fibreglass. I find closing your eyes whilst testing surfaces for smoothness does help. Sight can play tricks on you. Before the next stage, I needed to clean up the surrounding hull. All the steel dust had either ended up on my face or disappeared off somewhere, but the old sealant and gel coat dust became sticky and needed to be carefully wiped away. I need a perfect surface for the final steps to this operation, so filler appears on the scene. The aim is to take what's already a pretty good profile and end up with a perfectly smooth graduation across the old water drain. This is a premium waterproof filler, but it's polyester resin based, not epoxy, even though it's confusingly marketed as epoxy. It's formulated for excellent adhesion, and I've sustained this claim with some prior tests. Perhaps in a process that car bodywork specialists may be more used to than boat restorers, all it takes is a good dollop of filler, a small squirt of hardener, which is actually catalyst, not true hardener in the sense that you use with epoxy resins, and of course a good mix. It's important to be thorough, as filler that doesn't get any catalyst won't cure properly, and I'd have a messy cleanup job on my hands. I vaguely recall exhibiting some pretty spectacular plastering and filling skills for you in videos past, so you'll be in no doubt that such mastery is being honed yet further. Naturally, the standard evident from my smoothing of the filler before it began to cure and set hard are nothing short of noteworthy. There was no machine sanding required whatsoever to achieve this finish. And here, the story is curtly suspended. My next video will show why, but I did need to quickly, yet thankfully temporarily, waterproof the whole caboodle, so I've quickly brushed on some quality single part marine paint. This isn't the end of the story, naturally, as this needs to be glassed in and finished properly. I'll do that when I start the very, very major keel cooler replacement job later on this season. So, a natural segue to another job. The lower edges of the four main hatches have slowly become damaged by the constant traffic in and out of Allen. Not just boots, but all sorts of equipment being moved in and out. I want to reinforce them. So, I've got hold of some basic U-channel aluminium with some very specific dimensions that I thought would make a simple, secure, tap-on solution. If I made it too large, 
it might need adhesive or a fixture to stay put. If too small, the edging would either deform or even cause damage to the fiberglass. A few sharp taps do the job though, and I'll finish these off later when I have time to by filling the ends, smoothing off, priming, and coating with a grippy abrasion resistant coating. The rubber seals for the hatches have been partially displaced by the metal channel, but the adhesive is still fine, and there's no evidence the hatch seals are compromised. They're now over a decade old, but aren't perishing as they're almost always protected from moisture and UV from the sun. And now for my final job in this episode, and another vague hint as to what might be going on in the next one. I've received in the post a pretty vicious, medieval looking, and certainly premium priced, contraption and not at all a tenuous example of dispatching two birds with one lump of extremely sharp metal. An anode and a rope cutter all in one. There are two things I don't want. The first is for my propeller and shaft assembly to corrode. No one, especially Alan, wants that to happen. The second is to end up with Alan's sole means of propulsion being snagged up with a carelessly abandoned net or rope floating around in the water. The corrosion must be kept at bay at all costs, and the ropes and nets must be shredded and thus vanquished. This device delivers both services. All that's needed is to fix it to the prop shaft, hopefully the right way around, and tightly secure the two bolts. And then for no real reason, as I didn't seriously expect the thing to randomly fling itself off and decapitate a passerby, I thought it would be fun to fire Alan up and spin it around a bit. Aren't you lucky to bear witness to this moment in history? That's all I wanted to share with you this time. Bye.